in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Thank you because I'm walking out of this place healed, delivered, changed, transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm walking out of this place with a new anointing, a new experience. I I I I your grace my life has changed I will never be the same I've touched your grace I will never be the same I've touched your grace my life has changed I will never be the same tonight go ahead and pray mighty encounter do something in my life tonight only God can do do something in my life tonight only a Savior can do do something in my life tonight only a healer can do do something in my life tonight only a restorer can do do something tonight in my life only El Shaddai can do do something in my life only Jaira can do. Do something in my life that only the lifter can do. Someone is praying. Shabaka parakata balakata braska balakata. Rakata parate baratuska prende beleke baratus yata. Give me a testimony. A testimony of triumph. A testimony of restoration. Healing. Lifting by your spirit.
Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus name we pray the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion he says we were like them that dream God can turn a man's captivity did you hear me God can change the story of a man if you don't believe that you are not a child of God because God is not an idol may he change your story tonight may my God I don't know about your God but may my God change your story tonight may my God give you a new song tonight may my God rewrite the epistles of your destiny in the name of Jesus are you ready for tonight I'd like you to hold hands with someone by your left and right we're going to be praying in the spirit for just five ten minutes connecting by faith and for those who are not here following online go ahead in the next five ten minutes we're praying why are you praying to enlarge your capacity why are you praying because God is determined to bless you someone pray someone pray someone pray Someone pray. Shadabadagata parato sabrandaga balagatos yata. Pray. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Amen. This King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, is mighty in battle. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle.
His mighty battle. Amen. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm hearing a name, Rahila. Rahila. That looks like another name. I don't know if there's someone with that name. I'm hearing a name, Rahila. And the Lord is telling me he's bringing restoration to that family. Rahila. Rahila. Augustina. Someone with the name Augustina. Is there someone? I believe there will be someone with that name. Or perhaps many people. Augustina. This is the name that I'm hearing. And... The Lord is already speaking to that person, Augustina, you shall not die. This is rebuking the plague of death, the plague of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. The plague of death is averted, of, not just over their lives, what God says to one, he says to all. Whatever will make you cry, mourning your loved ones, we bury it tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing a name Victoria. Victoria. I, I presume many people will have that name. Victoria. The Lord wants to take away the plague of cancer from his family, the family of Victoria. This is what I'm hearing in the spirit. Father, I use this once as a point of contact to any Victoria with the plague of cancer over their families. As I'm praying for them, I'm also praying for everyone. This cancer thing is a very deadly, wicked, evil, satanic infirmity. It's able to swallow up people's destinies, cut short their lives. I'm using the victorious here as a point of contact. If there is anyone who has been marked for death by cancer, as I'm praying for them, I'm praying for everyone by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that embargo, that yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. The power of God is coming on a woman. The testimony that a young lady shared here about miscarriage. This is what happens to you all the time. You take in, but the baby never stays. Something happens and you just bleed and the baby goes. In Jesus' name, I'm speaking by the Spirit. Wherever that person is in this auditorium, across the airwaves, the overflows, I'm praying for you right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead let that embargo be broken now please ushers be sensitive as I pray amen 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 
I'm saying it again the spirit of miscarriage where you take in and lose the baby you take in and lose the baby it says none shall cast her young I decree every power that sponsors that repetitive pattern let it be broken now broken now broken now, broken now. Broken now. destroyed forever in the name of Jesus there's someone you had a dream in that dream you saw your teeth removing your teeth one by one one by one pulling out the Lord is asking me to pray for you wherever that person is by the power that raised Christ from the dead my God let the power of God bring you deliverance from that evil let the power of God bring you deliverance from that attack and for all the victorious who are here I'm going to pray but I'm seeing something I have to respond to the Lord just opened my eyes and I just saw a serpent like a snake every orchestration of satanic marine spirits over any destiny here i'm going to begin to pray maybe these people can clear the way because i'll ask you to bring those people out right now i stretch my hands let fire every spirit based on this vision the lord has shown me in the name of jesus by the power that raised christ from the dead orchestrations of marine spirits let the fire of God descend upon them now 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 hallelujah We'll sit down shortly but i want to pray i want you to bring those people out right now as i pray activities of strange familiar spirit you see a serpent is not just a reptile it's a reptile biologically but it represents a mysterious orchestration of darkness in the spirit are we together now that was the symbol of egypt the serpent the symbol of bondage the serpent the symbol of deception, the serpent. The symbol of strange, mysterious occurrences. I'm praying right now. The power of God is going to come on a few people. People and families that may not even know that is the spirit behind the calamities and the tragedies of your family. Are you ready to shout Jesus? At the shout of that name, anyone who is a victim of this influence it has damaged your life your destiny your family it must give way now whether you are an usher or not help me bring those under the anointing out at the count of three you shout jesus one two three shout jesus i cost those spirits represented in the operation of the serpent be delivered now I cause those spirit influences over lives, over destinies, over lives, over destinies. Bring them out. Over lives and over destinies. Shateke beteke parakatos kiata, ma prakate berekotiatas. Every covenant represented through the orchestration of a serpent that has tied your life, has tied your family. Hear me, in the name of Jesus, at this miracle service, I declare that that covenant is broken. Broken, 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 in the name of Jesus.
See, let me tell you the truth. Watch this. One of the assignments of the miracle service is not just to solve problems, but to also diagnose it. You may be a victim of many things you do not even know the cause. That's why God sent you here. Are we together? I'm still praying that prayer again. Families that are victims of these serpentine operations making good things to run away from you making help us to run away from you i'm still praying because that fire is still falling anyone any family under the influence of my voice that has been the victim of this operation you're going to shout that name jesus again at the count of three father thank you because there must be deliverance for your people are you ready one Two, three, shout Jesus. Rate bakatos kapra kete balatos. Breke paratos kaprente kete baratos yata. Destruction of evil satanic marine operations. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the face of a gentleman. I've seen this many times in my visions. Where you are looking at an individual, but in the realm of the spirit, you are not seeing a face. You will just see from the neck downwards. Because you see, the face of a man captures a lot of details. Identity is known by the face. When you snap passport, you don't snap um, your legs downwards. It is your face that is your means of identification and when that is missing in the spirit you can be in a place and yet you are never seen you are never known the glory the hair is on a man's face so when god shows me this is because someone's glory has been buried and god wants to release that person from it i'm praying for you any gentleman any lady whatever has buried your glory don't come here and waste your time tonight we are not playing games in the name that is above all names right now i pray for you let there be a restoration let there be a restoration let there be a pakatosh kete pakata rekete let there be a restoration a restoration of your glory a restoration of your dignity in the name of jesus For all those who are in front here, I decree and declare. It is for you or for your family members. Every foul, unclean spirit spying upon the liberty that should be in your life, I decree and declare, by the blood, be delivered now. And I speak to those spirits, leave and never return. Leave and never return leave and never return every legal access they have over your life and the life of these ones by the blood that access is broken be delivered now be delivered forever in the name of Jesus Christ they can go back to their seats please be seated God bless you welcome to our miracle service for the month of April There is a gentleman you are a prophet in the making and God gave you an instruction to come here today there is an anointing that God has destined for you to receive you are a gentleman you are a prophet in the making you didn't just come on your own you were sent by God here I pray for you wherever you are I'm going to give a charge a bit but let the power of God rest upon you 
in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. that the space that is earmarked for you and your prophetic ministry that space will not be lost Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. I say it again that space will not be lost Amen. will not be lost to death Amen. not be lost to carelessness Amen. your bishopric will not be given to another Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen and Amen. God bless you. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Is that the best you can do? In Jesus name we pray. The sounds of joy, gladness and rejoicing will never end from the midst of you and your people in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome everyone, those falling online, be prepared for an encounter. God is already giving us very mighty encounters and you will do a quick walk in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has traveled from far and near, you are most welcome. Again, Reverend Akila, you're welcome. God bless you, sir. Pastor Fred, you're welcome. God bless you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've taught you here that a miracle service is a service that is dedicated by God to visit his people by his power and to bring solutions to their concerns, solutions to their fears, solutions to their troubles. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 says, The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. The Lord, not the one in heaven, the Lord who has come down to you is mighty. Because of that he will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Tonight is a night of divine intervention. This is the prophetic word that God gave me while I prayed, preparing for this miracle service. And I just want to charge our hearts very briefly. I want us to listen. I sense that while I teach, there will be a strong impartation of the Spirit even before we begin to pray. You must realize that the, a miracle service is beyond the healing service. For most people, their idea of miracles is just limited to bodily healings. And while that is a major part of a miracle service, there are many other issues that plague men like you'll be learning that is beyond bodily infirmity. Are we together now? Yeah. There are troubles that can plague men that will even, they would, they would prefer to replace that trouble with sickness because of the weight that it brings upon them but regardless what challenge you came here with i'm praying for you in the name of jesus christ you will walk out of this place rejoicing yeah. it is the desire of all men it is the desire of every man especially every believer in christ to experience growth to experience progress, to experience advancement in life and destiny. It is everybody's desire as a person, as a ministry, to experience growth, to experience progress, and to experience advancement. When we celebrate special moments like birthdays, please look up. When we celebrate special moments like anniversaries, birthdays, um, award ceremonies, what we are celebrating in essence is a perception of progress. Are we together now? The reason why you mark those special days and celebrate them sometimes lavishly is because they represent defining moments in your life. They also give you a perception of progress. So when you are X plus one years old, you celebrate it with joy because in your mind, or at least based on your perception, you are making or should be making progress. When you commemorate events, anniversaries, and all kinds of special moments in your life, at the back of that celebration is an intention or a perception that you are making progress. And so everybody, psychologists, and I've taught you here, they teach that one of the principal factors responsible for happiness is a sense of progress there is nobody who frowns in the presence of progress once there is growth 
once there is progress, once there is advancement in all of its ramifications, it will command joy, happiness, it will command fulfillment. May that be your testimony tonight. Amen. Tonight you should shout amen, oh. Amen. You shout amen. Amen means let it be so. Amen means I agree with God as touching what I'm saying amen about. Are we together? No one, I wrote here, there's no one under the influence of my voice tonight that has all their desires and expectations met yet. Nobody. Regardless how accomplished, regardless how advanced in life and destiny you and I, you know, as God has shown us mercy, everyone still desires to make progress, have their desires and their goals achieved in one area or the other. I wrote here and I want you to listen that almost everyone under the influence of my voice has various areas in their lives where they are trusting God to step in mightily and to give them a testimony. Is that true? Everybody. Even if not for yourself, perhaps for your spouse, perhaps for your children, your parents, your siblings, and so on and so forth. So everyone has an expectation. Everyone has a desire. Everyone has something they intend to reach forth to. I wrote down a few issues that plague men. You see, God sees my heart how much I desire that everyone who comes here and everyone who connects by way of the internet, that we walk away with evidential testimonies, testimonies that attest to the fact that you met God. I was thoroughly blessed listening to the testifiers here, mighty manifestations of the hand of God, things that only God can do. There are people who are gathered here tonight because they are trusting God to be healed from sicknesses and diseases. There are people gathered here tonight simply because of the plague of stagnation. Stagnation and delays of all kinds over their lives and destinies. There are people who are gathered here tonight because of the plague of lack, want, and poverty. Lack want and poverty and yet the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want there are people gathered tonight because of the plague of shame and disappointment nothing good seems to happen in your life and even if it starts it never finishes things begin and you you never have the perfection of joy in your life something must cut short your joy and your testimonies shame and disappointment there are many people gathered today because of unexplainable demonic occurrences occurrences that they do not even have a, a definition for a, a occurrences that they cannot even explain they just know that they have called it all kinds of names others who call it bad luck huh? others who call it an embargo upon your life strange mysterious satanic demonic occurrences this is true for lives as individuals this is true for homes and families huh? this is true for even ministries this is true for businesses many are gathered tonight trusting God to sort out mysterious demonic issues that have plagued their health it looks like sickness but no amount of medical attention seems to attend to it it is just the expression that is sickness but that situation is not sickness it only finds expression as sickness so whether you take all the drugs recommended it doesn't seem to solve the problem because the origin is demonic Many are here because of all kinds of marital and family issues. Satanic manifestations over lives and families. A woman, I think it was um, two weeks ago, maybe about two, three weeks. This woman sent me a very touching text 
perhaps she's even following online, gave birth to a normal healthy child and after two, three years, the child began to behave, you know, very energetic and aggressive. And at first she went to the hospital and they told her that the child was exhibiting what they call mild autism. By the time the child clocked four, if I recall the text very carefully, that this boy had become so wild, like a wild animal, sometimes they have to keep him. That is not a medical condition, no. Let me tell you, I'm smart enough to know what is a, within the jurisdiction of a doctor. I'm praying that that woman is connected because that child needs to hear something tonight. It's a demonic thing. You give birth to a normal child. Is it not in your Bible that a farmer went to sow, took out time to put his ridges, organize his farm, Maybe he planted orange, but as soon as he left, I've taught you here, the Bible says an enemy came, planted nonsense too. Every planting that is not of God, roaming around the farm of your life and your destiny. We are not even going to give it a chance to grow. We uproot it tonight. We uproot it tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. There are people who are here because of strange, negative career issues. Have you heard of people 10, 15 years in a firm, no promotion? Some of them even interviewed those who are higher than them. And it's not just a character issue. They are not wanting in terms of productivity. There's just a wicked embargo upon their lives. There are people who are here because they are trusting God to avert patterns, repetitive patterns, like father, like son, huh? like mother, like daughter, father arrested, son arrested, grandmother raped, mother raped, grand, uh, daughter raped, spirits. Are we together? Grandmother returned back to her father's house. Mother returned back to her father's house. Now daughter is on her way back to her house. Now, don't feel offended. This, once you see repetitive patterns, I've taught you here, the assignment of covenants is to keep events to continue. They may have different actors, but the outcomes will be the same. Hallelujah. Lack and want, repetitive patterns. Betrayal and enemies, repetitive patterns. There are people who are here because they need to end the plague of untimely death. Untimely death. You know, and the way Satan does it in many families is that he does not kill carelessly. He looks for the one who can redeem the rest and kill that person. I'm reminded of a story, I think I've shared it a number of times here. Young, smart, first class graduate who went to collect his certificate, I'm told, and when that jet, it was a bike, on a bike. And then he died, just like that. Have you read the story of the widow at Nain? There were three death cases that Jesus handled. Every one of them has a lesson. This is not my teaching tonight. It's a miracle service. But I'm interested in the story of the widow at Nain. There was a mysterious spirit in that woman's life that killed all the men in her life. First, she was a widow. The husband died. Then the only son died also. And Jesus said, no, we have to stop this. They were about to go out of the gate. And Jesus said, what is going on here? And the woman said, all the systems of support in my life, Satan has taken them away. And Jesus resurrected that boy. Are we learning now? There are others who are here because Satan keeps expanding the distance between you and your helpers. They were closer to you in January than they are now. Keeps elongating the distance and you, you never seem to meet with the people destined by God to help you. And I've taught you the statement be fruitful also means be relational. You are fruitful only based on your connection. A dot becomes a straight line when a dollar dot allows the line to be joined. Did you hear what I, I just said? Yes. If you put just one dot on a paper, it can be called a line. It is a dot that is going nowhere. If you put another dot somewhere, it only becomes a line 
when the dots connect together that dot is you the other dot somewhere is some destiny helper somewhere the assignment of God and by his spirit tonight is to bring that connection mysteriously so in the name of Jesus Christ and while you are seated here I want you to believe God is not just here he's also where your miracle is did you hear what I said he's not just here he's some of you your miracle is in far America far UK he's everywhere his assignment is to make the bones come together we don't know where the first bone was the, the you know all the bones but we know that when he spoke the Bible says there was a sound and bone to his bone bone to his bone all kinds of setbacks and there are people who are here because your spiritual life has gone down yours you are not sick you are in a spiritual ICU huh you know how you see patients in ICU as soon as they come out of that car they wheel them straight into the ICU because their issue is a matter of emergency spiritually prayer life is not even low it's zero gone what study life zero gone everything that made you a christian has disappeared and vanished over your life my god is restoring you tonight yeah. there are many of you who are here because you are like the prodigal son you are destined for honor and greatness and glory but carelessness stubbornness mixed with pride has deviated you and right now your life has been so reduced you are feeding with the swines of life and destiny and some of you came here by invitation or came here on your own because the spirit of god told you listen this is not your place i'm told about the story popular story of the eagle and the chicken the eagle that grew among chickens and one day that eagle looked at the other eagles and it saw a similarity and said what am i doing here and it tried to fly and there it went never to return back again i'm praying for you those of you who are eagles destined to be eagles but you've been roaming around at the low levels of life may my god take you on a flight tonight hallelujah why are you here tonight to turn jacob to israel why are you here tonight? To turn Rahab the prostitute to Rahab the mighty, Rahab the great. Some of you are here tonight in the spirit of Ruth. Do you know why? Because Ruth lost literally the first phase of her life. There's someone you came here and everything, the first part of your life is like everything is dead. You've lost everything that represents honor and dignity. When Ruth spoke with her mother-in-law, she said, just go and leave me. I can't have children for you to have husbands from. My life is ruined, destroyed, everything. But God granted her grace and the later part of her life was full of honor and dignity. For someone you came here, you've lost everything. The only thing you have left is your physical life. But every other thing has died. There is hope for a tree. Hear me, even if that tree is cut short, cut off at the scent of water, it will bud again and I'm praying for you as a result of this teaching. I don't know what you have lost. You've lost your honor, your dignity, whatever. May the restorer restore you. In the name of Jesus. Many of you, God sent you here because your level of spiritual growth it's not robust enough for you to fight the battles that are surrounding your life. Let me tell you, enemies can be greater than a man. Did you hear what I said? Not just human. There are, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an array of light and truth that you need to have to command victory. And while the journey of a believer is progressive and gradual, the enemies don't have any respect for the absence of light in fact they delight in it so that they attack you before light comes and god has sent you to this place like the ark of noah so that certain things will be dealt with in your life 
by the time you have that liberty you can grow and tomorrow you become a giant yourself but in the interim when Moses who was a deliverer was a child God hid him somewhere because if he did not hide him small Moses would die great Moses as a deliverer would not die from the nation of Israel he had learned the ropes he knew how to command power even small Jesus had to be hidden so there are many of you God sent you here as a city of refuge because although it's in your destiny to be a mighty prophet, a mighty apostle, a mighty kingdom financier, at this level of spiritual infancy, if you are exposed to the attacks that the devil has predestined for you, you will not even live to become. And so God has sent you. The meaning of that is that with every prophetic declaration that comes, let your heart be open to receive. There are some of you, God sent you here as the beginning of the manifestation of the covenants that he had with those those before you he had already told them i would never let this family to be without a witness and even though you came from a family of idol worshipers perhaps you are the first person to start becoming serious with god he sent you because he spoke it to those who have died you were not there but because it's a covenant keeping god he will still find you and he's beginning a walk in your life tonight in the name of Jesus Christ some of you the only reason you came here tonight is because your destiny helper is also here God for you I know you won't believe it until you testify that you would not have been here tonight but because God saw your helper coming he orchestrated it's not something you find mechanically. You just leave the connection to God. He knows how to do what he will do. But that in this church now, you are here and your helper is also here somewhere. Hi, God for you. Do you believe this? What is divine intervention? Exodus 3, 7 to 9. Let's hurry up. What is divine intervention? Exodus chapter 3, 7 to 9. I'll read verse 7 and we'll read 8 together. Ready? And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows. Verse 8, let's read together in concert. One to read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing uh -huh, with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites verse 9 now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. What is a divine intervention? A divine intervention occurs when God steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives. A divine intervention occurs when God steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives influencing circumstances and situations to turn out for the good of his people i'll take it again divine intervention is said to occur when god steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives comma influencing circumstances and situations to turn out for the good of his people. That is what we call a divine intervention. When God steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives, influencing circumstances, influencing situations to turn out for the good of his people. It is usually an act of deliverance from negative circumstances or conditions divine intervention is an act of deliverance 
from negative circumstances, negative conditions. I wrote something here and I want you to listen. He does this, God now. God does this as an act of his mercy, an act of his love, and an act of his sovereign power. Why does God step in to intervene? He does this as an act of his mercy. He does this as an act of his love. He does this as an act of his sovereign power. When God steps in over the affairs of my life, over the affairs of your life, over the issues in my life and your life, influencing circumstances and situations to turn out for the good of his people. And I said that he does this as an act of his mercy, an act of his love and sovereign power. Who is expecting God to do that tonight? To step in. Step in. Push everything and step in and say, I've come to fight a battle my child cannot fight. I've come to deal with an issue that is beyond the believer's power. Why do we need divine intervention? One clear reason, and I want you to listen. Why do we need divine intervention? I wrote here, and please listen, then you write. There are certain situations and circumstances we find ourselves in that are beyond our ability as humans to influence or change. This is the primary reason why we need divine intervention. Because there are certain situations, there are certain circumstances that we find ourselves in that are beyond our ability as humans to influence or to change. There are certain circumstances and situations that we find ourselves in as humans that are beyond our ability to influence for the good and our ability to change. These circumstances can be caused by our ignorance and carelessness. These circumstances can be caused by human factors beyond our control. Or these circumstances can be demonically engineered. I'll take it again. That these circumstances that are usually beyond our control, necessitating a divine intervention, can be caused by, number one, the presence of carelessness or ignorance. Because carelessness or ignorance from Scripture can lead men to pain, lead men to difficulty and self-inflicted negative situations but number two these circumstances necessitating divine intervention can be caused by human factors which are beyond our control human factors god gave every man a will are we together and god will not usurp the will of men he will allow men to choose now the only problem is that sometimes in making their choices it can have an effect on you are we together now? Yeah. For instance, if a grandfather or a father gets up to go and consult powers and writes the name of all his children and says, I want this shrine to protect them. You were not there. God respected the choice of that man, the choice to be evil. But then unfortunately, you can become a victim of the choices and the decisions of other people. Hallelujah. The Bible is full of many innocent people who still suffered. I give you an instance. The daughters of Job did not choose to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was the choice that their father made and they had to follow because they were the daughters. They were about to lose their life, lose their dignity because they were in a place that was so depraved. It was not a, there's no record in the Bible that their journey to Sodom and Gomorrah was a unanimous decision. Lot made that choice as the head of that family and he together with everyone he had were on their way to Sodom. There are human factors beyond your control. Are we together? 
if your director decides to do business with arm robbers and the company loses the company did not lose because of your lack of productivity but someone who was your superior went on your behalf and transacted business that should not be and then you become a victim you need divine intervention many of you right now are in many battles you do not even know you are just seeing stains of blood all over your life and you cannot know where the enmity is coming from because those connected to you began certain battles either through carelessness or just the will of men and you found yourself in the middle of troubles you do not know there are people today who are in trouble because of the kind of surname that is added to their names now nothing wrong but perhaps there was a battle somewhere are we together now and just because you carry a particular name someone will ask you is it this son name I know you say yes sir and it's all right you hear from us that's how you lost the job the problem was not the first class the problem was that there was a, an, an a vendetta that predated your your arrival and you just swept yourself into it May God arise for you tonight, oh. Yeah. That the issues around your life that are higher than you or not the ones that are as a result of your ignorance and carelessness, he will still arise concerning them. Yeah. But the ones that are due to factors beyond your control, factors beyond your control. Hallelujah. I remember a very humorous story I was told years ago about some of these our young people who went to sell a property belonging to his mother and he sold it to a church they didn't know the family did not even know he had sold it they just saw church are you know church people they surrounded it and were giving thanks and the mother saw people around the land lifting their hands and thanking god for this kind of breakthrough true story and she wondered, she didn't know that her son, the only son, had gone and he gave it at a giveaway and the church saw it as breakthrough. It's not their fault. They paid for it. And the boy kept quiet with the thing. Now, that mama is suffering not because she was careless. She's made her investments. But because she has a child who was not thinking well. Are you seeing that now? Another person's carelessness. And the church is rejoicing, giving God thanks. That was what called her attention. Why are people gathered around my land? Because he was not far from the house. They were lifting up hands, giving God thanks for what God had done. Whereas the boy sold the thing. And of course, you know this kind of boys, it will not take one month. That money will disappear. Because the prodigal son, we don't know how long before this money disappeared. But the kind of people who were described in his journey can finish anybody's money overnight. May you not see those kind of people. And if they are around your life this night, may God take them far. Listen. The spirit you call a waster does not work by eating anything physical. It brings wrong people into your life. There are people who can finish 100 million in one day, 100 million in one night. You would think I'm exaggerating. They will be involved in stupid things that destroy it overnight. Satan for you. Hallelujah. So human factors beyond your control, you can be in pain and be a victim of another person's carelessness. One more example on that. Have you heard about the man in the Bible called Jonah? Jonah. Jonah sinned against God. He knew the hand of God was against him. He quietly entered the ship. Did he confess it? No. He just kept quiet. Are we ready to go? He, he, I hope you know he was a prophet. So he already knew what would happen when the storm and all of that started he was sleeping the people suspected that something is wrong all of us are panicking but somebody here is not participating in this rescue and they went to wake him it's in your bible jonah and he got up what is wrong why are we crying we are throwing everything and you are keeping quiet and he still kept quiet until they casted lots and it fell on him and they said, what happened? He said, truly, let me tell you the story. I actually ran away from God. And um, they said, what do we do with you now? He said, if you really want to be free, throw me out. It was not someone who was cursing him. It was out of compassion. He said, just throw me and leave me with God. We know how we would. But if I am in this boat, 
You see, if they were so compassionate and said, Jonah, but you know it's not in our character, they would have all died there. There are times you have to look beyond sentiments and say, Jonah, I love you, but I will be praying for you while you are out of my boat. At least he knew God would send a fish to rescue him. Those other people, did they have that kind of covenant for a fish to rescue them? Did the fish rescue their bags that they threw out? Are we together? Now, I'm saying this because there are people who can afford to be careless because they have elder brothers and elder sisters. They can waste money and say, I'm sorry. But you who is the only person, you will squander the money with them and they will quietly go to all their destiny helpers and lie down and roll while you are suffering on the street. May God give you wisdom this night. I'm showing you why we need divine intervention. That there are times that we become victims of the decisions of people. 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 Number three, there are situations that are demonically engineered. Oh, this is true. Does Satan afflict people? Yes. John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I've taught this endlessly in this place. Satan truly comes to steal. He does not come to discuss. He does not come to negotiate. The moment you see Satan around the vicinity of your life, you can be sure the worst will eventually happen if you leave him there. The worst may not start happening, but eventually it will happen. And let me tell you how Satan operates. He will touch a part of your life and watch your response. When he sees that you are cold, giving excuses, he now re-strategizes and comes again. Give Satan a hole, he will make a door from that hole. Some of you right now, it is because you became careless. Satan attacked you, you kept quiet. You didn't cry for help, you didn't ask God for help. You didn't meet men with the grace to help you. And Satan said, I have discovered that this person is not serious about their destiny. Let me continue. Can I show you one scripture? Acts chapter 12. Give it to us, please. We'll read from verse 1 to 4. I just want to show you a statement. Watch this, everybody. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex Satan of the church. So Herod wanted to strike the church. The Bible says he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Is that in your Bible? I want you to read verse 3. Ready? One to read. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Stop. What did he do? One more time. So it was not his original intention to take Peter. But because he touched James, like he touched your finances, it was not his plan to come to your health. But he touched one area in your life and you did not care. He said, no problem. It's just a human thing. He said, I like this kind of person. He proceeded further. When he proceeded further to take Peter also, the church got angry and in verse 5, I believe, the Bible says, but prayer, give us five, was made. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. In other words, the church said, no, if we keep quiet, it's one by one that will kill all of us. Why do we need divine intervention? There are situations and circumstances that in many regards are way beyond our ability as humans to solve, to influence, to change. Can be a product of our ignorance and carelessness. Can be a product of the decisions of men that we have to be victims of. And sometimes it can be demonically engineered. It doesn't matter in what way it has come tonight. In the name of Jesus, you must be free. Yeah. Shout a believing amen. Yeah. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things men can do. For instance, men can think. For instance, men can walk. For instance, I can stretch my hands and pick up my Bible. I don't have to be a Christian. That ability is given to all men. It's not a sign and a wonder if my hand moves from a human standpoint. 
It's not a sign and a man that if you see me eating, it is given unto men. So there are things when you see, you know that men have done this. But there are things when you see, you know that Satan has done this. Hallelujah. How do you know Satan has visited a life? Because he steals, he kills, and he destroys. You can know Satan has visited a family because he steals, he kills, he destroys. You can know Satan has visited a church, Satan has visited a destiny. But ladies and gentlemen, I have good news for you. There are things only God can do. There are things men can do. There are things Satan can do. In the parable, Jesus came and said, an enemy has done this. But there are things only God, only God can do. And God is determined to do in your life tonight what only he can do. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 26, 6 to 9. I found this scripture and it blessed me mightily. And the Egyptians, and the Egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us. Watch this now. And laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice like he's hearing your voice now and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. Verse 8. And the Lord brought us forth from out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The only one who can perform that miracle is the one who had that kind of hand. God has the mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Verse 9. And had brought us into, I like this scripture, God can bring men out of and bring men into. There are men who can bring you out of trouble, but they cannot bring you into blessings. There are men who can bring you into blessings, but they cannot bring you out of trouble. But there is a hand that can bring you out of and still bring you into. Does that sound like good news for someone? He can bring you out of every curse, every yoke, every demonic orchestration, and then bring you into out of then brings you into there is a hand that can stop a kidnapper who is running with your children you you hear the testimony of that woman so such people are on earth you are not the only one who is waking up as you wake up they wake up too determined to make your day great they are also determined to carry your children and this issue that happened to this our dear sister was not carelessness it was not carelessness Okay, I just want to pick up something and the man zooms away. I'm sure in his mind he's already calculating. The first child will go for two million naira. The second child, are anybody bargaining on your head? In the name of Jesus Christ, my God will bury them this night. You don't believe men can bargain on the head of many? Ask Joseph where the brother's not bargaining on his head. Ask Jesus and Judas, how much will you give me? And I will give you this man. So he's calculating two million for the first child. The one that is a bit grown, maybe 2.5 or 3 million. And then you gather everything. And these wicked, demonic people don't mind killing. Because something has happened to them. They are under a full influence of a spirit. No man without the assistance of a spirit can be that wicked. I can tell you this. Hallelujah. How about the one who shared a testimony? 75-year-old grandmother. Huh? Plagued with cancer. And that devil found everything can change depending on what force engages it depending on what force i once watched something i think it was on youtube or something i was just playing around with my time one heavy um crusher and they keep putting all kinds of things and they watch it crushing it i can't even remember how i got there and i was enjoying watching i mean you will see things that look strong but under the weight of that machine it will crush it into pieces you see that thing tearing cars, tearing metallic objects. I said, this is power. 
I needed to see that thing to remind me. Sometimes you need motivation, even if it's from science. That's power. That you put something that is bragging, you can carry this pulpit that claims it is all glass. You bring that thing near that crusher. Non-emotional approach. It will squeeze it into pieces. That's how God is squeezing someone's every oppression over your life. I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me and gentlemen don't play with God find out what two angels did with hailstone don't ask where they got it from when God decides to arise over a man's case you see that now he said let God arise and let all his enemies be scattered it's not a suggestion provided he decides to stand up listen in my little life and in ministry I've seen situations where God arose for me and for people. It's a fierce thing to see God arise. You will not know he was ever a lamb. I'm telling you, there is a side of God that is not good for men to see. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious so back to my crusher story that thing just crushes everything before it you would see very heavy weighty objects like cars just pass them through that crusher and you will see pieces of metals coming out literally shreds them like cabbage in the presence of a chef but you cannot do that with your human strength but there is a device even invented by men that can make that happen how much more God that a man beats his chest and says, provided I am alive your family will not rise you will tell him you are right if it was me fighting you but because you have made such a nasty statement I will hand you over listen you know how it happens in an office Someone calls you, you are not the one to talk to the person, you are just the one who picked the call. And then you connect the person with your boss and leave them there. Huh? The person can shout, don't be stupid. You say, no, 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 you are talking to the wrong person. And then you, by the time he talks to the boss, two of them can finish their thing there. This is your assignment as a believer. That when the devil is backing and say, you don't know what I did with your grandfather, you tell him, no, your grandfather fought by himself. I'm not the one who is fighting. I'm only going to connect you with a power and a grace that is greater than me. Come on now. Do you believe what you're hearing? You will never rise if you try to fight it on your own. You are too small. You don't know how old these forces are. They are vicious in their operations. But not when the king of glory comes. He will arise in power with jealousy over you. And say, what is stopping joy in this family? And they say, it was some covenant somewhere. Say, no. Do you believe I can step in? If you say yes, he said, now get out of the way. This is not your battle. This is, there, there are battles you don't have the power to fight. My dear brothers and sisters, your assignment is to invite God into that situation and get out of the way. Do you believe that? Now sit down, let me give you a thought very quickly and we'll begin to pray. God is changing someone's story. So there are things men can do. There are things Satan does. When you see it, you will know. But there are things only God can do. I want to give you very quickly the keys that provoke divine intervention. I'm not teaching on them, I just want to give it to you so that you are aware. We'll pick one or two of them that will be engaging tonight. But it's important for you to know. There are five keys 
that provoke divine intervention. Hopefully I'll have a standard teaching on that and I'll take time to explain all of them one by one. But number one, the first key that provokes divine intervention is heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt prayers. Heartfelt, not careless prayer. Not prayer while you are sleeping. Not prayer that you're just... Prayer that is heartfelt. Psalm 18 and verse 3. Psalm 18 and verse 3. Please give it to us. I will call upon the Lord, he says, who is worthy to be praised. He says, so by that formula, shall I be saved from my enemies. There is a relationship between salvation in its entirety and calling upon the name of the Lord. Give us Psalm 61, please. Psalm 61, we'll read the first four verses. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Verse 2. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. It says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Verse 3. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Final verse. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of your wings. Hear my cry, O Lord. Anybody who can cry tonight like blind Bartimeo, if you can cry, then you can secure divine intervention. God cannot assume you need him. No. It takes a desperate cry. Crying unto God is a sign of humility. I've taught you here that prayerlessness is pride. It's proof that you do not need the assistance of God. Thou son of David, have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my finances. The prayer of mercy is one prayer God does not ignore. If it is a genuine prayer from your heart. I'm saying this so that when we begin to pray, you understand that you are provoking divine intervention. It is true that God can step in over the affairs of men, but he does not do it arbitrarily. There are rules. There are keys that provoke it. Are you ready for number two? Heartfelt praise. The second key that provokes the divine intervention is heartfelt praise. You still find that in Psalms 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord. Then it says, who is worthy to be praised? Not just worthy to be prayed to, worthy to be praised. In Acts chapter 16, give us from verse 25. 25 and 26. The Bible says at midnight. Remember Paul and Silas? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. The first formula. Heartfelt prayer. Then they sang praises unto God. Loud enough for the prisoners to hear them. Next verse. Suddenly, there will always be this kind of effect. When men know how to pray. And men know how to praise. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately. Not two years later. Not five years later. Immediately. All the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loose. May that happen for you tonight. What is the third key? That provokes divine intervention are you learning obedience Isaiah 119 obedience please give it to us Isaiah 119 if ye be willing koinonia body of Christ and obedient the Bible says ye shall eat the good of the land I have said it emphatically that no matter how bad any land is there is good buried there it is your obedience that commands your portion to come to you. Did you hear what I said? Right now, across Nigeria, there are many cities and many territories where minerals are being discovered, solid minerals now. Those minerals have been buried there for years. Others were discovered in non-commercial quantities, but others now are being found in 
very commercial quantities. Just because it was just discovered does not mean it just appeared. It's always been there. Only God knows how many other minerals scattered across Nigeria, scattered across Africa, and many parts of the world. Once upon a time, as rich as Nigeria is in oil deposit, a time came when it was hardly known. And then one day, someone discovered it. Can I tell you, your portion is still lying quietly. Whether or not you will access it, it takes the force of obedience. If ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you are disobedient, the plagues that are in Genesis chapter 28 from verse 13 downwards, all of that plague will follow those who are disobedient. You see it now. Cause shall you be when you go out? Cause shall you be when this happens to you? Cause shall you be when this happens to you? I mean, all kinds of causes. Negative atmospheres that follow men. The force of obedience. Give us, a scripture just came to my spirit, Psalm 119. Many of you don't read that scripture because it is too long. Psalm 119. Let's try 153 from verse 153. Yeah. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Is that in your Bible? Next verse. The, the stretch of it is to verse 160. But let, let's just finish it. Plead my cause. His, this whole scripture is showing the man is crying for salvation on account of his honor to the word of God. Deliver me. It says quicken me according to your word uh -huh. salvation is far from the wicked for they seek not your status why is salvation far from them because they seek not your status they don't want to know your word and they are not in interested in obedience next verse since we've gotten there let's just finish it great are thy tender mercies O lord it says quicken me according to your judgments uh-huh many are my persecutors and my enemies Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and I was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The final verse, thy word is true from the beginning and every one of thy righteous judgments endure it forever. Obedience is powerful. It can command breakthroughs and command deliverance and even divine intervention for you so number one heartfelt prayer number two heartfelt praise number three obedience number four sacrifice the fourth provoker of divine intervention is sacrifice sacrifice of your time sacrifice of your resources sacrifice of your energy sacrifice the Bible is full of men and women who literally turn the tides and rewrote things in their lives on account of their sacrifice. Do I talk of Abraham? Do I talk of Solomon? Do I talk of, um, you know, the nation of Israel? Do I talk of even hedonistic kings who slew their sons and an indignation rose against Israel? Sacrifice is powerful. Psalm 50 verse 5 says, Gather unto me, my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Finally, the fifth provoker of divine intervention is the prophetic. The prophetic. Every time you are in an atmosphere, our precious people sang about the power of atmospheres. When you are in a prophetic atmosphere, because the Bible says God confirmed the words of his messengers he performs the counsel you see that when God sends you among the many things you enjoy if you are truly sent is divine backing that means when you speak as touching his name he will defend you the atmosphere of the prophetic is very powerful son of man can these bones live Ezekiel 37 only down knowest it says prophesy I prophesied as I was commanded and the Bible says there was a sound there was a sound there was a sound the prophet said by this time tomorrow there was a sound 
as the lepers found their way to go and give themselves and fall upon their enemies, perhaps they will be preserved. The Bible says the Lord amplified their steps and their enemies heard it was like the sound of chariots and they began to insinuate all kinds of scenarios in their mind oh the king has gathered this nation this nation to come against us and they ran and left their spoils there the prophetic is powerful it says believe in the lord thy god so shall ye be established believe in his prophets so shall you prosper i know this has been abused but make no mistakes about it the prophetic has a space in the making of men. When God said, I am come down, we never saw him coming down directly, but he sent a prophet. It was that prophet that spoke and confronted Pharaoh alongside the spirits of Egypt until God's people were released. God has sent me for your sake tonight, and in the name of Jesus, whatever will not let you go must go for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God reaches down to men through men. Men that he has granted mercy and grace. Men that he has so lavished with his power and wisdom. So tonight when God says it's a night of divine intervention, these are the things you should expect. That God will reach down over your situation. The meaning of that is you are not the only one who is tired of that situation. God for your sake is also tired of it. And that means there are there are things that have to change tonight. Have to change tonight. Finishing all your money just on drugs. They pay you your salary. You are owing every pharmacy around because you are not able to take care of yourself based on the demands. Let me tell you the truth. Whatever does not leave you tonight is what you permit to remain. Provided you are angry. Angry at that situation. Angry at whatever it is. Lord, what has taken away my glory? Let it be restored tonight. What has reduced me that people use me to warn others and say, may you not go down like this person? You can change that statement. I've preached about Ichabod. Man can last. There can be longevity to your impact. You're a man of God connected or you're a man of God here. You, you must cry for over the work God has given you. I will not labor in vain. No. No. Are we together? You are a businessman. You've been working hard from January till now. There's nothing to show for it. Doors will look like they will open and then they will not open. The question is, who is behind? Who is closing that door? No door closes on its own. Someone is closing it. Even if it's an invisible hand. Like I would always say, there are many of you who need divine intervention over your career and your life. You are gifted. You are blessed. But the nations cannot hear you. Because every time you attempt to rise, according to Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, there are horns. These are, these are spiritual forces. Verse 19 says, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means your praise. Israel means your promise. And Jerusalem means your peace. These are the horns that have risen. They targeted specific areas. Your praise, your testimony, your covenant, your promise, and your peace. They will not allow the word of God to come to pass. But the Bible says in verse 20, gave perspective to that again. It says the Lord showed me four carpenters. And then verse 21, it said these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Watch this so that no man did lift up his head that means they tried what is it about the music ministry that i cannot rise but these horns are vowed in your rising is the salvation of many in your rising will also be your reward and other people connected to you will eat from your rising many of you don't know how wicked satan is you think he's conditionally wicked he's the epitome of wickedness he will kill anything that must be killed he does not mind if your children die. If you think Satan will reconsider your case, wake up. I've always marveled at the shamelessness of Satan. How he came and stood before Jesus. Forgot that he was thrown down from heaven. And stood confidently before Jesus. And made that statement. All the proposals he made. Satan is that shameless. He will afflict you and come back. 
you will cast him out and he will still come back. Paradventure, you will give me space again. You don't deal with stubborn spirits casually. Satan is everything else but a fool. No, he's not a fool. I can tell you that for sure. He's a stubborn spirit. He will come back. I was driven out of your life in January. Let me come and find out. Are you spiritually healthy enough to still keep me far? He's that determined over your life. Are we together? Divine intervention. When God decides to arise over the case of a man, I wish I had time, ladies and gentlemen, my intent is not to teach tonight, just to give a charge so that we'll pray. But I wish I had the time, I would have shown you three people in the Bible who experienced divine intervention. It is a marvelous thing when God decides to come on your case. An example of such a man was Job. Job's life always gives me joy and hope. I'm not sure I have met any man in my little life who was that devastated like Job. People lose things, but how about a man who lost everything? All he had was God, his wife, and his life. Miserable life, you want to say so. There was nothing glorious in that life. Yet Job said, I will still not give up. I wish we could find that scripture. I don't know if it's in Amos. I, I, I can't remember the exact verse now. That talks about a shepherd that comes to rescue just one verse, but it's very powerful. A shepherd that came and ate a sheep. Huh? And all that was left of that sheep was two ears and one, um, one what? One leg. And yet the shepherd still came and fought. I found that scripture. Bless you. You see why it's good to have good media people? God bless you. As the shepherd, give them a big God bless you. Thank you, my dear people. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of ear. What does a shepherd, I mean, the lion has finished everything. How do you eat a sheep such that all that is left is two ears? That word or is actually an and one leg a piece of an ear and two legs my apologies what do you need to do because provided you can hear and you can act there will be restoration that watch this now this is a very powerful scripture how do you come and meet that is a level of devastation you've eaten everything heart gone brain gone head gone I'm sure the lion was resting to finish the remaining part. And the shepherd said, even now, come on, even now. Let this be a prophetic word for someone, even now. It is not over. That every part of that sheep has been eaten. But provided there are two legs and one ear. What is the ear for? Because faith comes by hearing. Once there is an ear that can hear a prophetic word and there are two legs like two witnesses, you can take steps. There can be mysterious recovery. Hold on. Two legs and one ear. I don't want to speak science, but from a standpoint of science and even molecular genetics, there is hope in resuscitating life in those two ears than the dry bones in Ezekiel 37. They were very dry, meaning there's no blood. This one, they are fresh. So science has maneuvered ways. They literally, even from a scientific standpoint, two legs. And the shepherd said, you don't know me. You don't know what I can do. There must be restoration. And he said, bring the one ear. Bring the two legs. <laughs> and he said, sheep... You may have gone, but I use your ear, provided you can hear me and the legs. I don't know what kind of miracle that is called. For someone, that's how you came here. Your business is dead. You only carried one ear, one business ear and two business legs. Keep them on the ground and watch what the power of God can do. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Because when you say divine intervention, I'm stretching your faith. 
my God, I wish I have the liberty to share with you some of my testimonies. If you don't believe God lives, think again. If you don't believe God restores, think again. If you don't believe God opens the book of remembrance, think again. My dear sister, who told you God cannot raise help for you? You have been begging around. Men don't help you because they want to. There is a force that compels remembrance. This is true for businesses. You are a contractor here and nothing is working. Just keep your tools on the ground home and say, Lord, I throw it before you like the rod of Moses. Let his presence rest on it. Then it becomes the rod of God, the business of God, the church of God, the ministry of God. He says, take up that rod where it thou shalt walk signs and wonders. Let me tell you what we do with things that don't work. We don't throw them. We cast them before God. Everything, learn the lesson from the woman with the alabaster box. The moment anything in your life is not working, don't throw it. If you throw it, you waste it. Learn the lesson from this simple story. Your marriage that is not working, your job that is not working, look at me please. Your destiny that is not working, your ministry that is not working, you came to Koinonia tonight. Don't just throw it, your hands will be empty. Carry it and bring it before your maker. I hear you are a restorer. Here it is. Restore my destiny. No job, no dignity. Everybody looks at me and it's like there is an embargo upon my head. I travel to Lagos, the same embargo follows me. I come to Abuja, the same embargo. I went to US, followed me. Canada followed me, everywhere followed me. The issue is not location. You need to tear off that veil. When Jesus died, one of the immediate responses to his death was the tearing of the veil. There are veils that cover things. And the Bible says it tore from top to bottom. Top to bottom. Are you learning tonight? I'm looking at people here tonight who have all kinds of issues within their lives. Some of you, whilst you are seated here, you are just crying and saying, Lord, please step in for me. I'm tired of this situation. It has mocked God too many times in my family and my life. Please, I want you to release your faith. The God of heaven wants to step in for you. Step in for you. I heard about a lady, you know, this ministry is like medicine. You meet all kinds of situations. I heard about a lady... Her wedding was dissolved the night to the wedding. True story. The night, not one week, night. That the next day, you have paid cake, paid decoration. That night, the wedding dissolved. I told you about the one that got married and there was no Thanksgiving the next day because the people fought over a silly, petty thing and that was the end of it. Don't tell me that is natural. It's a lie. Huh? Huh? How about those you got an email? Congratulations! You have been given a managerial job. You even testified in church. And you went back and then you get another email and they say, sorry, it was a mistake. You had a similar name with somebody. What kind of thing is that? A similar name. How about somebody who becomes arrested and they say, we are looking for a criminal and two of your names match. So you come, you answer questions first. If you are innocent, you will go. But at least you are arrested. Or because your face looks like a criminal. Ladies and gentlemen, our world is not all scientific. Get used to this. I'm not just priming your mind to always think Satan, Satan. No, that's not the idea. But it's just opening you up to a reality that if you ignore this, you will pay for it. Victory has been given to us in Christ but not administered in ignorance. You must know who God is and understand the spiritual arsenals that have been given to you. This is what brings you victory. Why are we here tonight? To see the God of intervention arise for us. Why are we here tonight? To give us a chance to experience the power of God so that we can stand before his people and declare to the nations that God is real. It is true he can come through for men. It is true he can change the stories of families. It is true he can heal. Every testimony you are going to be hearing here tonight, I want you to know whether testimonies of healings, 
testimonies of breakthroughs, some of the deliverances that have happened to God's people, please look up. Let me tell you this. Look beyond Joshua Selman and look beyond Koinonia. We're in a business that is beyond showcasing ourselves. No, that is at all not the agenda. It will be a total waste of your time and an insult to your intelligence if all we are doing here is just marketing ourselves. There are people whose problems are too, too serious for the marketing of flesh. For someone is seated here with a, a death sentence, maybe cancer, this cancer thing again, or some kind of demonic thing, how do you ignore that situation and all you want is to be seen? Now, my charge for you as we pray is please give your destiny a chance to experience the God of intervention. If you are here for the first time and you are used to doubting preachers and doubting the power of God, let me advise you. Why don't you just shelve that? Give God a chance. Give God a chance and watch what he can do. Give God a chance. Apostle, but I don't believe miracles are real. No problem. It's all right. I understand your situation. But why don't you just give God a chance? Apostle, the situation in my family, there is no ear and there is no leg. Go back to the God who created from nothing. He's still alive. He does not need an ear and a leg. It's only an advantage. Even from nothing in his world and in his realm, nothing is a raw material. He can create anything from nothing. It was Reinhard Bonke who taught beautifully that the more zeros you have, the more you add one in front of them, they carry bigger value. So if you have two zeros and you add one in front, what is that called? Hundred. If you have four zeros and you add one, it's 10,000. Am I right on that? Many of you are praying for breakthrough. Here's your test. If you have six zeros and you add one in front, does that look like what will come to you? So the more the zeros Reinhard Bonke was teaching, the more you see the power of God when it comes, the more frail and weak and undeserving you are when he comes in as that one. And he called himself, I remember, not condemnation, but just for an illustration. He called himself a man with many zeros. No wonder when that one came, it became a factor that marveled the world. When you become sufficient in yourself, you cannot see the power of God. Because when God does much with you, he cannot be glorified. Make reference to my teaching last week, Doxazo. The displaying of the splendor of God, the splendor of the King. In the next few minutes, many things will be happening here. I'm going to be praying for the sick, but I'm going to be speaking over your life. We're going to be praying together. Watch this. The primary channel for administering divine intervention is prophetic declarations. Did you hear that? Prophetic declarations. Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priest. And as they went, in honor to that prophetic word, John chapter 2, fetch the wine, the water, be on your way, go and serve the rulers. As they went, so you're going to be hearing prophetic words that will come as touching areas of healing. I want to take a few minutes to minister to the sick tonight. And even though those who are, you know, you've been here for a while, most of you have been healed. You may not need that, but for the sake of someone, I look forward to times when the only people who will be healed from the church are strangers and newcomers because God's people would so experience his power. There would even be no need for that again. When the glory comes, oh, when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Sing it one more time and then I'll begin ministering by the Spirit. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say.
have seen many miracles in my life. Many. I have seen the power of God move in spectacular dimensions. You will think having experienced the power of God for all these years, I should be used to his power. I also watch with shock and wonder many times as he moves in the midst of his people like he will be doing now. There is no getting familiar with his power. It is amazing. Regardless how you see it and in what variety you see, it still comes fresh. It still compels praise from your heart to your maker. And so for every healing that will happen here right now, for every deliverance that will happen here right now, for every rewriting of our destinies that will happen right now, for every impartation of grace, for every door that will be opened, for every spiritual connection that will happen by prophecy, I want you to have it at the back of your mind that he does this because he loves us. He does this because he's mighty. He does this that all men will fear him and that the nations will know that there is a God who rules over the affairs of men. Rise up and let's pray. Just one simple prayer I'm going to ask you to pray. And then I'll begin to minister to you by the Spirit. There's such a glory in this place. And words are going to come targeted at your life and your destiny. I'm praying for you that you have the heart to receive. Please don't waste your time. Men are made upon the strength of the prophetic words that come upon their life. Young, old, rich, otherwise, educated, otherwise, enlightened, otherwise. Let your heart be open. Because when he comes, he comes to his people. He comes in his glory. He comes in his power. A dear sister's life is about to change. A dear brother's life is about to change. Someone who came in like Gideon is about to leave a warrior. Someone who came plagued with all kinds of sicknesses and infirmity. Here's what I want you to do for me. Be positioned to believe God and receive. But I want you to also know that you have a role to play in the life and the receiving of your neighbor too. Sometimes you may need to help them to stand in faith as they believe. Sometimes you will need to encourage them and help drive unbelief out of their lives. But by all godly means, let tonight be your miracle service. The God of all grace, the one who is ready to step in and to intervene over your life is in this place. One prayer, mention the area where you want God to visit you and please turn it into prayer. Go ahead and begin to pray. Mention that area and begin to pray. Let it be from your heart. Don't be silent. The lifter is in this place. Lord, you're holy. Lord. You're holy and we lift you up and magnify your name. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy and we lift you up and magnify your name. Please make sure you pray. Lord, you're holy, Lord, you're holy, and we lift you up and magnify your name. Lord, you're holy, Lord, you're holy, and we lift you up and magnify your name. Abalabakata 
my time for lifting his cup my time for rising is come. Someone pray. My time for a testimony has come. Ah. My time to encounter grace has come. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true. Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true. Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me start tonight by praying for the sick. Now listen to me. Do you know why we pray for the sick? Please listen. Praying for the sick is your commitment by God to see that people enjoy the fullness of their days. Every manifestation of sickness, especially when it becomes supposedly incurable, is a measure of death over your destiny. Because I have told you that there is a health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body. Your body is a host to your spirit. But it is not a host under every condition. There is a threshold health condition that your body must have and maintain for your spirit to be comfortable living within it. And when your body deteriorates beyond a certain health threshold, it's a law that has been fixed already. Your spirit will have to discharge itself from your body, whether it is your time or not. So Satan has several strategies to cut short your life. The most effective, aside from instant death, is administering sickness so that it begins to kill you. The goal is to deteriorate your health. In medicine, we call it your immunity level. That is a medical terminology. But in the realm of the spirit, it is a certain health requirement. It keeps going down, 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 beyond the threshold. And your spirit will have to leave, whether you are ready or not. So he says, a body has thou prepared. The body did not just appear. The body was prepared. Are we together now? Yeah. So when we pray for people and administer the power of God, when they come here testifying, there is no testimony that is trivial. There is no testimony that is small. No, from the headache to someone throwing a crutch to someone's eye opening, someone's deaf ear opening, every miracle is deserving of honor. I'm saying this as a disclaimer so that we do not get used to the manifestation of the power of God is one of the mistakes that ministries like this usually have. We get so used to spectacular manifestations of the power of God that we do not think it's not worth celebrating. What is there? Okay, you can walk now. Save Johnny. No. No. One of the ways you secure the presence of God is to acknowledge everything he does. Are we together? Let's pray. You are sick in your body. We'll start from there. I want to deal with many issues now. But I want us to start with the issue of ill health. And thankfully, there are many hospitals, many hospitals that air these miracle services across to their patients. I will always say, may God bless the matrons, the CMDs, and all who allow us to bring the healing power of Jesus to these hospitals. It is the least we can do as a commitment. I want to pray now. If you are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hands by faith, believing. Lay your hands where you are trusting God. If it's your head, lay your hands there. 
your legs lay your hands there your stomach lay your hands there if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest if you're standing for someone I see people lifting photos of people perhaps they are even connecting life I know there are many across the globe tens of thousands of people connected right now God is not a magician he works real miracles provable by medicine and science and you're about to witness his power again in the midst of people you came here having an eye condition an ear condition doesn't matter what it is high blood pressure anything that was told you in the hospital that this thing is death happening to you I want you to believe God we're going to pray now I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart I have searched for you and I have found you I have found you with all my heart Yes, I have searched for you and I have found you I have found you Father in the name of Jesus you have given us the grace to extend your power and your grace to your people and to the nations your people are here gathered in their thousands to receive from you the healer the lifter the one who brings health and cure he says heal me O Lord and I will be healed save me and I will be saved as I pray for your people I pray that you honor your word now here's what we're going to do I'm going to begin to rebuke those spirits and as I minister the power of God that anointing will search through your body correcting everything at all and the moment that happens I'm going to give you an opportunity while I minister to other cases I'll give you an opportunity to check yourself whether you're in here all the overflows and outside and even those connected online the moment you find out that a miracle has happened for you I'm going to ask you to please make your way to the front and I'll request that you do that very quickly you need to go to the medical stand um, to check yourself to verify we only announce miracles that have been verified are we together now and so I'm going to pray for you once that has happened I'd like you to summon the courage and if someone has received a miracle close to you sometimes people just have their phobia encourage them so that they come and stand here whether by my left or right we have medical doctors who will check you we'll have a few testimonies as I minister for those of you who receive from across the globe go ahead and send in your testimonies there are lines that are available and would receive your testimonies like you heard during the testimony time let's give honor to Jesus and then I speak over several areas of your life and if you are here you are not sick you can stand in for someone and then be attentive to when I come to deal with an issue that relates to you you will be a very quick one and we trust that Jesus will be glorified can I pray now father in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands across the length the breadth of this auditorium across the airwaves by faith I pray over people who have been plagued with all kinds of diseases sicknesses and infirmity in the name that is above all names the spirit behind this infirmity behind the blood conditions behind the headaches the migraines the bone problems the organ failures I speak to you in the name of Jesus leave those bodies now my God I sense such an anointing leave those bodies now leave those bodies now leave those bodies now still pray
condition in the name of Jesus anyone here suffering from any blood related case be healed now be healed now every respiratory problem be healed now in the name of the Lord Jesus every organ that is failing or has failed in your body let it jack back to life now ulcers be healed ulcers be healed high blood pressure goes down now low blood pressure is healed now lumbar spondylosis be healed now fractures dislocations of all sorts be mended and corrected now those who came here unable to walk receive strength to your limbs now blind eyes and every sight related issue be healed now those who could not see begin to see those who could not hear begin to hear heart palpitations be healed now neck problems the Lord is healing a neck problem be healed now frequent urination frequent urination there is an elderly man you have this thing and it looks like it's a trace of prostate in the name of Jesus be healed now every growth around your body lumps all kinds of growths and swellings they dissolve and die now brain tumors be healed now dental issues be corrected now there's someone you have a problem smelling in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle for you now someone you have a very tingly feeling at the back of your feet it looks like they are piercing you with pins in the name of Jesus let that be corrected now severe pain at the side just at, at your you know the side the chest region in the name of Jesus the upper chest region be healed now digestive problems be healed now respiratory problems be healed now reproductive problems be healed now there's someone you're not able to go to the toilet to ease yourself I don't know what the name of that condition is unaided in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is but I cause that demonic condition now if there is anyone here whether you or your loved ones any part of your body is decaying as a result of ulcers or diabetes in the name of Jesus Christ let life surge to that body now is someone receiving let life surge to that body now every damaged tissue damaged organ damaged whatever it is around your body may my God give you brand new organs now the power of God is moving everywhere and I want you to receive by faith receive by faith it's like you are swallowing a drug the drug knows what to do in your body there are all kinds of corrections happening shoulder pain be healed now pain around the arm be healed now seizures and all kinds of epileptic symptoms be healed now there's someone you can't sit down um, your lower back the moment you sit down someone has to help you stand up because it's like you have some problem I don't know what it is but the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus 
Now, whether I mention your case or not, for everyone who is, or just help those under their, under the anointing, I decree and declare, right now, let healing come for you. Perfection come for you. Across the airwaves, be healed. Here on ground and on site, be healed. Connecting from various hospitals, be healed. Connecting from various regions of the world, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Here's what I want you to do for me. I want you right now as an act of faith. I sense so much happening to people already. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. The moment you find out that a miracle has happened, if it's a condition and a situation you need to reach to the medical stand to verify, please be at liberty. Just let the protocol know that you are going to verify. If it's a blood pressure, they can check it. They have all the tools and all the gadgets. I want you to take a moment to check yourself. And if you are in this place and you find out that a miracle has happened for you, while we begin to clap for you, because I want to also be attending to other issues, I want you unashamedly, I've taught you on giving glory to Jesus. I want you to check yourself, leave your seat, whether it is to my right or to my left. We're going to give you an opportunity to testify. We'll do this very fast because I need to attend to other issues. Let's begin to celebrate them. Check yourself. Those in the overflow outside, those in the overflow down to the basement online, are you celebrating miracles right now? So the moment the power of God touched you, bend over if you could not bend, try to walk, stand up if you are sitting on a wheelchair, a crutch, lift the crutch and try to walk, check yourself, the pain, if you don't find any pain, please make your way to the front. Let's celebrate them as they come. Hallelujah. Now to conserve time, I'm, I'm, I have other issues to deal with while they come out. Now if you are here and you have suffered any career failure, I want to pray for you now. Now is your turn. Something is about to rest on you. Those for healing, please keep making your way forward. But I'm ministering now to those who have been stagnated. No door is opening for you career-wise. Either no job or no breakthrough career-wise. Your certificate looks like a piece of paper. It's time for something to happen to you. Father, I'm praying right now. Let the fire that will fan their careers back to life. In the name of Jesus, let that fire rest upon you now. Let that fire rest upon you now. There is a lady, maybe you may need to go outside. You are going to cough out something. Something literally is going to come out of you. When that happens, you will see that a mighty miracle has happened. You can come and testify when you check yourself. I just saw this in my vision. In the name of Jesus, something physical will come out. And once that happens, that is the end of that infirmity. Because it's a satanic and demonic infirmity. All those with no jobs, let me speak to you if you believe that in the name of Jesus by May Miracle Service, may God shake Abuja, shake Lagos, shake Calabar, shake London, shake the US and put you in a place of honor in the name of Jesus. Put you in a place of honor in the name of Jesus. Put you in a place of honor in the name of Jesus. Put you in a place of honor in the name of Jesus. Believe what you are receiving. You are receiving from God. Career failure. You suffered and went to school, but there is no evidence around it. You can't rise. You are just roaming around as if you are somebody who is unenlightened. I pray for you again. Where your hands cannot reach, I extend your hand there by prophecy. Where your hands cannot reach, I extend your hands by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. 
if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain